Hello, welcome to part six of how to build a wildlife pond. I'm surrounded by a nation of plants here. All of them are going to go in somewhere. I won't bore you with the details, but I'm going to get them planted and then explain what they are and why I've used them. I've also brought a lot of rockery stone. Um, it's actually quite nice limestone-y sort of stuff. Um, I've had it at home for about seven or eight years and never got round to using it. And I think the high binoculum may be just the place to use it. So I'm going to put that in as well. Okay, that's the hibernaculum done. Basically just dug out patches of soil, pushed stones in, planted between them with heathers. I've put the odd sedge grass in there as well, just to, just to break things up a little bit. But basically, the whole mound has been covered by soil and rocks and plants. There's a couple of entrances at the front here. Whether you can see that, either side of this sandstone rock, there's entrances so things can get into this pile. No doubt when rain washes a bit of soil off, there'll be more entrances around it. But uh, in the meantime, it's basically a cave with a load of hyper habitat inside.
Now we're going to put a couple of lilies in the pond, but seeing as these are newly potted up, i.e. they've only been in the pots for about five minutes, if I just put these straight down in the bottom, the buoyancy of the compost is going to overcome the weight of the gravel. In other words, everything's going to go bloop, and it's going to make a hell of a mess. So what I'm going to do is just put these in to about six inches of water, allow the compost to soak in all the water, and then drop them down to the bottom. That's it. I'm going to leave that for about 15 minutes whilst I pot the other one up. Then it should be safe to put it in. Whilst the lilies are taking in water, before I put them in the depths of the pond, I'm going to make some bunches of oxygenators. This doesn't look like much, but it's a really, really nice plant. It's called starwort. And basically, all I'm going to do is take some lumps of lead, wrap them around the bottom, so that they make a nice big bunch. Chuck them in the pond. Probably is enough in this bag for five or six nice big bunches, which is about right for this size of pond. Right, the lilies have had about 10 minutes or so to soak up the water, so they should be ready to put in now. still quite buoyant so they're gonna go back out again soak in a bit more water if I'd just left them the whole lot would have been on the top I think I'll put the lilies in last I'll cut the liner off next when I'm cutting back the underlaying liner I tend to use the scissors and I get the liner as close to the ground as I can I do the same with the underlay But because the underlay doesn't stretch and therefore snap back a little bit, there's always a little bit more underlay showing. So what I do with that, I just get the flame gun on, careful not to have it too long on, otherwise it will burn the liner. And because the underlay has a lower melting temperature, I just tidy up with a flame gun. That just reduces it a little bit. Liner's still fine, underlay melted into the ground. You can of course forego using scissors on the underlay. If you're very careful you can just use a heat gun and literally just cut it off with a, with a flame. But be very, very careful not to touch the molten bits of plastic because they are very, very hot. And they stick to your fingers and it hurts a lot. See from this that by using the burning trick to remove the underlay it makes a really clean tidy edge. All I have to do now is chuck a little bit of soil in there and you'd never know there was liner and underlay buried under it. That's the edging with a little bit of soil in. You can see how it just covers everything up, fills in the little holes. Grass will grow into that lot and it'll blend in quite nicely. That's it, pond job's finished. Before I go, I will briefly run you through the plants that I've put in and then give you a little bit of a tour. 
most of the plants around the outside are picked to live in two extremes either being very waterlogged or very dry depending on the level of the pond so we've got them ones there are pendulous sedge they get pretty big that's green rush it prefers being wet but it can survive pretty dry conditions should be standing up but I took it from somewhere very very wet where it was flopped um, this little fella just here is soft rush and really that pattern's repeated all the way around soft rush pendulous sedge soft rush rush and sedge rush a lot of rushes and a lot of sedges in this one because it's a very wet hole just here there's an iris as well this quite tall plant here is called purple loose strife forms a nice bush it's a little bit floppy now because I only dug it up this morning this is wood rush forms a nice dense mat very good for spiders that live very in, in either very moist conditions or extremely dry conditions more brook lime there's quite a lot of that because that forms a lovely mat over the cobbles and also out into the pond more sedges to bind all the soil together a few ferns to give a little bit of shade for the hibernaculum a lot of heathers on here in amongst the stones because I would want the hibernaculum to be pretty much just a mound of heathers heathers create a heck of a good environment for spiders and all, all sorts of other insects and hopefully that should attract the amphibians to the hibernaculum the other side of the pond pretty much mirrors this one um, that's a heather put in there just randomly there's another random heather over here just to break it up a little bit more brook lime lilies stuck into the sides of the wall there's also quite a lot of um, bog bean it's its worst time of the year but generally that's it there the big long stalk going back to the wall they normally have three lobed leaves very big thick waxy leaves and they get and quite a nice like snowflakey sort of flower on beginning of the year this time of year a lot of pond plants are knackered and including that it's it's had its best this big mass here is water mint same with that there I've also plugged the lily into the deeper regions of that underwater refuge there put two big lilies in pots took a while to get those to sink I had actually put big cobbles in to weigh them down because the lily combs were so buoyant these are the bunches of oxygenators which is starwort they should form lovely kind of underwater green bushes and this is water soldier it grows about 18 inches across again creates very good habitat for wildlife especially dragonfly larvae they seem to like being on there and there's a big iris just here big yellow iris I'll put the Latin names for all of these in the description if anybody's interested there's also a few very small marsh marigold again it's the worst time of the year from them so they're very small almost like little seedlings all plugged in around the sides but really once the plants establish the pond should look very nice if I can I'll come back in a week or two once the plants have settled and I'll get another video then everything won't look so kind of false but um, at the minute it looks all right there's the hibernaculum once all the plants get established on there that'll be an awesome habitat for for practically everything that lives in or around ponds there's two entrances there and if you remember how we built it there's it's just like a cave with masses and masses of tunnels uh, really good habitat in there all that remains is for me to thank you for watching um, if you've watched parts one to six you have my condolences hopefully it wasn't too painful for you but um, if you've enjoyed it you join me on my next project thanks for watching